All right, time to work on the book. Mm. <clears throat> the past couple days I've been trying to work on the book in the morning. Today I was starting to feel some pressure to get a couple of uh, scheme videos. Hadn't made some scheme videos for a little while, so I made a video on... Uh, actually, it was about R6RS in the sense, but it was answering a, a question about um, and what's the difference between proper tail calls and tail calls. And I made a video that was over an hour, well over an hour. And I didn't answer the question because it turns out, if you look at R6RS, um, <laughs> R6RS points you to a paper by Will Klinger from 1998 from PLDI that's uh, 12 pages long, uh, that gives a formal definition of what a proper tail call is. So um, I have to dive into that next time. And then, you know, so that took, you know, like an hour and a half or something to record. I forget exactly how long that was. And then I did another video after a break, which was on macros. So I had, you know, I'm on up episode, was this 28 now, 29? I think it's episode 29 now. Episode six was the macro one. And so, well, it's been like, it was like 22 videos uh, before I got back to the macros. So, I uh, made another macro video. Hadn't gotten as far as I thought I would, but, uh, you know, that's fine. Talked about lots of interesting things, I think. So, um, anyway, we got two scheme videos. I've started, well, at least last night, I tried uh, batch processing, you know, when I was going to sleep. Um, just because it, it takes about as long to process the videos in Final Cut Pro on my laptop as it does to record the video. So if I record a video for an hour, it takes about an hour roughly to process it, to export it and do a, you know, for the leveling and export uh, process to happen. It only takes maybe two or three minutes for me to set it all up. Uh, and I can chain them. I can say, okay, I want to export three videos. I can level them separately. So you know, five, six minutes, I can set that whole process up and start it. But then, you know, my laptop, you know, my fans are going and my CPU is pegged. And so it's sort of like, okay, I'm just going to leave the computer there for a while. And a couple of times I've tried doing things when my computer was that busy and it's just the computer was non-responsive or the export failed or something. So I just I'm not going to mess with it. Um, so <clears throat> that's what I'm going to try to do tonight. Um, what else today? I read another book by Dean Wesley Smith. Uh, so I've been reading these short books by him. This is my third that I read effectively in one sitting. Um, it's called Writing a Novel in Seven Days, a Hands-On Example. And he has another book, which I also got at the same time, called How to Write a Novel in Ten Days. So this is the seven-day challenge. He writes a novel with 43,000 words in seven days while working a full-time job. He said he worked 44 hours that week. Uh, and he got sleep, and he also watched TV and cooked and stuff like that. So, you know, his point was, uh, you know, if he can do it at age 65, um, there's no excuse for, for writers uh, who say they can't do it. They just aren't really pushing themselves. And I have noticed that if I'm really under deadline, like if I'm working on a paper and it's like, oh, wow, the paper's due in like three hours and I need to rewrite the intro from scratch, I can actually write really fast. And it's actually uh, very readable. The thing that uh, I have noticed if I'm, say, writing a paper and I write the intro super fast, it's not that the intro isn't well written at the level of a sentence. It's that the approach that I, I take might not be um, the approach that I would ultimately take if I rewrote it a few times. So that's the big difference I've noticed. Um, I've noticed this with a number of things I've rewritten. So anyway, uh, Dean Wesley Smith, the previous video, I, I mean, the previous book I read of his was Writing in the Dark or Into the Dark where he talks about for fiction, writing without an outline, just going with the flow. Um, 
And he does say in this book that not all the advice uh, works for nonfiction, but some of it does. So I don't know. Uh, but, but the main thing is he says he was able to write this book in seven days because he had fun. He had fun. He knew he might get blocked on the book. He, he knew he might get stuck. He knew he might feel under time pressure, all those things. But he said that, that he saw that as a challenge and he liked the writing. He liked the story he was telling. So, you know, because it was fun, it didn't feel like work to him. So, um, you know, maybe it felt like work a little bit, but, but the point was he enjoyed it. So I'm going to try to cultivate that feeling as well. <clears throat> um, uh, yeah, so, so reading all these little books from him, I haven't read any of his fiction. You know, it, it reminds me a little of this quote from uh, Moneyball, if you've seen the movie Moneyball, where Brad Pitt's character is, uh, you know, talking to Jonah Hill's character in fr and they're talking in front of this, this group of scouts for professional baseball. And the scouts are like, well, you know, we, we, don't, we like this guy because, you know, the ball really pops off the bat and... You know, he's got great looks. You can put him on a poster and all that. And uh, you know, Brad Pitt's character is getting rid of all the, the expensive people. And he's just going to like hire all these you know, people considered sort of scrubs because they're cheap and his baseball team doesn't have much money. And uh, so he's trying to explain why he's doing this, why he likes certain players. And it's like, oh, this player is no good. You know, I mean, fine. Five years ago he had it, but you know, he doesn't run as fast and, you know, he bunts a lot now and he's not swinging for a home run. And, uh, Brad Pitt would just look, you know, point to, to Jonah Hill and he says, his character, he says, uh, we like him because he points to Jonah Hill and Jonah Hill's character was says, because he gets on base. The whole point was getting on base. What's the percentage of getting on base? And, uh, that's how I, how I feel reading these books by uh, Dean Wesley Smith. I have no idea how much I'd enjoy his fiction, but he says he's published over a hundred books with traditional publishers. And given the fact that I have four of his books that I've held in my hand, obviously he is able to pump out books quickly and he finishes them and they go to press and they're available to buy. I uh, he had his own newsletter or has his own newsletter. Um, so, <clears throat> You know, the same sort of thing. I don't know uh, how, how much I'd like his fiction, but he gets on base. He finishes books. He gets books to press. Gets books to press. So that's what I want to do. I want to get books to press. And uh, that's, that's the idea. Okay. Today I was kind of low energy. I think I had kind of a sore throat waking up. I hope I'm not catching anything. Um, still kind of low energy. Maybe that's fine, actually. You know, when you're low energy, it's maybe harder to be anxious. As you may have noticed I haven't typed anything yet. Have, I've yet to type any words. So, uh, let's see, we're nine minutes in almost. Um, but those are a few things on my mind. And so I am also going to read How to Write a Novel in 10 Days. Today is Sunday, February 4th, so I've got about uh, 24 days remaining um, after today to finish the novel. Or sorry, not the novel, the book. All right, so let's get started. Let's get started. I'm hoping my warm-ups take less time over time, but, you know, maybe, maybe that's just uh, the way it is for right now. Maybe at some point. You know, it was like that with making the videos. I mean, honestly, I couldn't believe that I'd already made, let's see, 20, what did I say, 26 videos since that first macro video. Now, I think my count was off by two, so I guess I made 24 videos, but that's like, really? I made 24 videos since I made that video? <laughs> wow. Okay. So I think I'm over over that that feeling 
Um, I don't know what would happen if I took a break off from making videos for a while. Maybe I'd get some anxiety for the first few again, but um, I do things in one take now. You know, you know, I get kind of like uh, the Peter Weller RoboCop voice. Uh, Good or bad, you're coming with me. That's the way I, I think of these things now. You know, we're not, we're not, we're not about, we're not about perfection. We're about, um, I guess, being authentic. Maybe I don't know. Okay, here's the book. Here's the book. Here's the book. It's gonna be fun. It's gonna be fun. <clears throat> Hmm. All right. We have a bunch of things here which aren't actually the book, so I am going to move those somewhere else. Uh, I don't know. Stick it in another file, I guess. Blah, blah, blah. I guess some of these things are are uh, about this book that I'm trying to write because I do want to. Yeah. Okay. All right. Starting to have some ideas. Starting to have some ideas. <clears throat> All right, so I've modified the title again. Okay, so this is the new title.
I don't know if that's the actual title, but it's going to be something like that. Maybe it's the idea. That's the idea of the book. Okay. All right, I'm gonna back off a little. <clears throat> I'm gonna back off a little on spamming this everywhere. I'm gonna be a little more strategic. figure out something like that.
let's see, I guess technically it's 25 days until going to press, sending to press. Whatever you want to call it. Okay, so here's something that <clears throat> can happen to me. So I've got a bunch of stuff here, like a bunch of notes from before. Some of which I think works for me. Some of which is, is right. It's either, I could either clean it up or maybe even some of it goes in directly or, you know, maybe it's inspiring, but I have trouble dealing with it in the middle of the book. So this is why I create all these files. Um, so let me stick a bunch of stuff in there. So basically, <clears throat> if I'm not sure, it's going to go in there. It's going to go in this file. I'm just going to shove all of this stuff in there, da, 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 all the way up to acknowledgments. Great. And then I will put things back depending on what I think goes in there. But I, I just want to keep this clean. I mean, okay, the deadline, um, that I'm going to keep because that's kind of that's the critical thing okay I have to finish 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 all right okay here we have a Steve Jobs quote if you want I want that one I've got a zillion quotes real artist ship okay Uh. 
<laughs> All right, I got my first laugh in. <laughs> All right. Oh, yeah, I needed that laugh. It's getting a little stressed out. Mm. <laughs> so funny and so stupid. starting to make myself lulls. <clears throat> okay. This sentence could use some work, but it's got the right, the right idea. The right idea. And Okay, so I like the surprisingly awesome part. I like that. Probably 50 other books called that, for all I know. But, okay, sure. Kind of. Kind of. This one... Anyway. Well, we'll think about that later. We'll think about it later. Mm -hmm. Okay. <clears> okay. <throat>
<laughs> My friend Evan made a image macro of this for Mini Canon. <laughs> oh. I love that. Oops. Okay, so we're going to go spelunking. We're going to go dumpster diving in those files. And we're going to put stuff here. But we're not just going to like copy and paste random things. You know, <laughs> it's basically to do book goes here. Okay, <laughs> that's our to do. Write the book. <laughs> <laughs> it's like draw the less draw the rest of the turtle or whatever it is draw the rest of water <laughs> okay so that's our to do to do is a write the book good 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 <clears throat> okay so let's look at our awesome notes to start with Okay, I like this. This I like. This resonates with me. show you a technique that I use to write my dissertation, my PhD dissertation, or sorry, my thesis. No, no, my dissertation. Sorry. Um, my brain is uh, in backwards gear right now. By the way, there's a difference between a thesis and a dissertation. So there's a thesis statement or the thesis is your claim and your dissertation is the written document backing up the claim. So when I wrote my, you know, Olin Shivers has a great document online talking about this and telling you how to write a great uh, thesis statement, which is advice I used. Um, but somewhere I found, I found something online by a professor somewhere in Indiana, maybe at IU, PUI or I don't know, some university in Indiana when I was in grad school and work, working on my dissertation and having a lot of trouble. And it was uh, proposing a methodology that this professor's students had used to successfully complete dissertations. And the idea was to outline down to the paragraph level, topic sentence level, and talk about what goes in each paragraph. And the idea would be something like this. So, all right, so I wanna talk about some of these things, right? Like these problems, I'll just copy these for right now because something like that I wanna talk about. Okay, so we're gonna work on this chapter right now, the power of absurdity. Now, it can be very useful to just kind of dive in the middle of something, but 
I'm going to want some sort of introduction, I think, for this chapter. So I can just say there's, an, there's a, a to-do. In fact, let me go ahead, by the way, get rid of, okay, so from now on, <clears throat> that doesn't work quite yet. Okay. As a basic rule, when I have a to-do, it's just going to be in square brackets like these. Uh, okay. So that means to-do. I don't have to type to do. That's just, that is a to do. Okay. Uh, up here. So let's get rid of these square brackets. I want to be able to search for them. Some of these quotes might end up in the book, by the way. I kind of feel like it. <clears throat> and I'll use uh, a different delimiter. Okay. Um, intro, yep, 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 yep. By the way, one of the, one of the pieces of advice in, uh, that Dean Wesley Smith has is when you're writing a book, if you need to fix something, just go ahead and fix it. Just stop, fix everything right there. And that's something Dan does. I've noticed that that if you're writing a book with Dan, he'll do it. If he um, if you decide you need to change some notation. Once you decided, okay, we got to go back through the book and we have to do a pass and we got to fix everything. He doesn't want to have the book with things that he calls, you know, hanging fire or whatever. So you, you don't want to, um, you don't want to end up with like at the end of, of, of a month having a to-do list that's, you know, uh, 10,000 lines long or something like that. You want to fix the things and that gives you, but first of all, it just fixes it. And then secondly, you have a more realistic uh, understanding of what the book is. And it's also very motivating. You see the book coming together, all that. So when I when I realized that I wanted to use uh, the square brackets as uh, to do, then, you know, just went ahead and fixed it. So I'm going to try to do that in general. Okay. Um, great, great, great. Before I went back, oh yeah, so here's like, uh, so how do I fix this? All right, so let me look for the to-dos. Anything to-do I want to, whoops, I don't want to-dos, okay? I'm going to fix out all this. Okay, there no more, no more, the word to-do should not appear anywhere in this document. I have a table of contents. Say it's chapter one. I can fix this as we go. <clears throat> I don't need that. You have some redundancy here, but that's okay. All right, so I fixed that. So that's that's going to be one of our principles. If something needs to be fixed, we're just going to fix it. Uh, in fact, I'm going to add that to our rules. Okay. All right. Okay, so that's that's a rule. 
I'm not sure about these rules down here about the lulls. Okay. Some of these rules are just to get me started. If, if it gets me started and a book comes out the other end, that's, it served their purpose. But, um, so this is just a general rule that I learned from, or, I, or, you know, Dan would do it. I don't know if I, I don't know if Dan explicitly told me <laughs> that that was necessary, but that's certainly how he worked. And certainly Dean Wesley Smith says that that's critical. All right. So that's one thing. <clears throat> Okay, so we're going to attempt this approach. I forget I forget the term used by this professor, but it was like outline to the paragraph level, outline to the sentence level. I don't remember the exact terminology. I don't know if I could find it again. Um, but I found it surprisingly awesome. Okay, surprisingly awesome in writing my dissertation. Like I said, dissertation was the written document supporting my thesis. And the basic idea work like this. So if you're you know working on a section, part of the problem actually this was this was okay, maybe I should include this in the book as a useful strategy. Uh, maybe this goes into been I finished I graduated in 2009 I think I had my dissertation written uh, mostly written 2008 beginning 2009 anyway uh, so it's been it's been a minute since I looked at this okay so I, I have to poke around to find that uh, I'll, I'll explain in a second let me just make sure I get this checked in Yeah, this I found super helpful for the dissertation because the dissertation was by far the biggest, most complicated thing I've written by myself. Obviously, wrote two editions of the Reason Schemer with Dan, with Oleg, and second edition with Jason. But um, you know, the dissertation really was me writing. Now, there were papers that it was based on, and obviously. You know, we'd explored things in the Reason Schemer, and but you know, the language change between the you know, there's some um, some dissertations people write that are literally three papers stapled together, like three papers, and then maybe a little intro, and maybe a little conclusion, and that that is the dissertation. Um, you know, the paper is not reformatted; it's just like literally the paper as published. Uh, and then three of them with an intro, maybe a conclusion, and there you go. There's your dissertation. That's not what I did. I had papers, and 
had a book. Um, but I found, even if I had wanted to do that that way, which I didn't, I found it difficult because the the language changed over time and you know, the writing style for the little book is completely different than what you would have for a dissertation, which is different than what you would have for a paper in a workshop or for a conference or whatever. So, you know, there were different versions of language, uh, overlap in examples and, you know, different notation, different audiences. It, it was a mess. So I found that I really had to rewrite from scratch and I, I found it very, <laughs> Very difficult, very intimidating, as you might might be able to tell. Um, but the thing that really helped me was this idea of outlining to I don't I forget what it's called outlining to the paragraph level or the topic sentence level or outlining to the sentence level. Maybe that was what's called outlining to the sentence level. The idea is here. Here we want have some sort of introductory paragraph. Okay, so. I can I can say okay square brackets are my to do right anything in the square brackets is a to do intro para all right so that is a to do to me that I need an introductory paragraph now what is this paragraph about okay intro para about um, or describing Okay, so I'm I'm kind of making up because I don't really know, but that's realistic, right? Um, how the more ridiculous, ridiculous and absurd, the challenge, the easier it is. Uh, sentence <clears throat> about okay so this is where we could talk about a uh, pen uh, am I spelling it right pen Gillette I'm not sure check spelling sorry pen uh, Losing weight by eating potatoes at first. How do you spell potato? Potato does have an E. <laughs> I feel like I'm back in the 80s. Eating potatoes, um, just eating potatoes by just eating potatoes. And his conversation with his friend. And about how to lose weight. And his friend. Saying that yes, he could lose all lose that weight, but it was going to be really hard. Which made Penn happy. because he realized he could do really hard things and do them more successfully and more successfully than mildly the medium difficulty things all 
Okay. <clears throat> we got some more to talk about here. So, you know, this probably isn't the greatest example. Um, but the idea here, once again, is to defeat your inner sensor uh, and to just start writing and start thinking about organization and the idea flow instead of worrying about getting every sentence perfect. So I'm actually quite good at editing and getting the sentences to read well in terms of the English. Okay, I can do that. Um, but if I'm not careful, I will be in editing mode all the time and I'll get paralyze and and take 30 minutes to write a sentence because I'll be oh I've got to do that or, or I'll keep erasing the sentence so the idea here is to write a kind of a net a, 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 you know sort of almost like a, a note to yourself so um intro paragraph describing how blah 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 okay and then we're gonna say this sentence um, we're going to say it is a four sentence intro paragraph. Okay. Um, para whose topic sentence <clears throat> explains how <clears throat> the more ridiculous and absurd the challenges, the easier it can be. All right. So the idea is then you say, you know, one sentence about this or just a sentence about, you know, second sentence. We can do it this way. Second sentence um, about, you know, second sentence explains, you know, Penn Gillette, uh, losing weight, blah, 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 blah. Okay. And then, I don't know, maybe that's two sentences. Maybe second and third. You know, actually, that, that pen story is starting to sound like a paragraph to me. Okay, so that might be a paragraph. Okay, so now... You know, so let's say, well, let's say this is a four sentence paragraph. With a topic sentence. About Penn Jillette losing weight <clears throat> by just eating potatoes. Um, sentence about his conversation with his friend about how to lose weight sentence about his friend saying yes he could use lose that weight it's going to be really hard sentence about pen about this making pen happy Because he, he, he understood, because he knew he could do really hard things more successfully than easier things. Um, yeah, so I'm going to get into that more, but okay. So, so here's the way it's supposed to work. And, and I have a lot more work to do on this. Uh, but the idea is <clears throat> notice I didn't write a paragraph. I didn't write any sentences. I wrote meta sentences. I wrote meta paragraphs. Okay. So I've basically written a meta paragraph saying what this paragraph will be about. And I've written meta sentences explaining what sentence I want to go there. Okay, so the whole point is to take me out of the editing mode 
and the uh, sensor mode and the clean things up and it's got to be perfect mode. And th the brilliant part is as you massage things, as you get them in the right place, um, you know, the sentences get closer and closer and you polish the sentences a little bit. And then you realize that, you know, uh, once you get close enough, you realize you can just, you know, remove the part about sentence about or, or change a few words here and there. And now you actually have a real sentence. You actually have a sentence that could be in the final document um, or, you know, with, with little tweaks could be there, but things are in the right place. You have the arguments in the right place. You have the quotations in the right place, all of that. And then you end up with multiple paragraphs and a whole section or a chapter or whatever that now you could actually edit for a content. Cause as, as like Jonathan Harris said, uh, he said, I'm not, I'm not a writer, but I'm a very good editor. Okay. Well, I'm, I am a writer. Uh, that's the whole point of this is I am going to write, I'm going to write 11 books, but this year, um, but I don't challenge, I, I don't struggle with editing the way I've historically struggled with writing. If I have something in front of me, that's complete, I can edit it, uh, much more readily. So, but the part, the, the hardest part for me is getting everything down, getting the structure and all that. So this idea, uh, and, and I'm not doing it very well here, but you can still see that I've written down basically a story or part of the story. And I've started moving things around a little bit. Uh, so that's the methodology that I am going to, to use for this book. Huh? Okay. So we're over an hour. Um, I had forgotten about this methodology. Forgotten about it. Okay, show example. Meta paragraphs. Meta sentences. Massage. Until real sentences turn off your, crit your critic uh, editor part of your brain. And, you know, once I get good at this, what once once I had a lot of experience, um, I could often write entire paragraphs this way, entire meta paragraphs this way. and just remove the one sentence, you know, the four sentence para and a sentence, you know, saying, uh, that's probably the way I should do it. The sentence saying, right? It's something like that. So I'll have to, uh, maybe I can find it online again, but I may, I may have to, to, to remember kind of details or figure it out again. But, but the point was you can actually do this in such a way where at least I found I could trick myself out of editing mode, out of critic mode, and I could write these entire meta paragraphs. And, and I would say things like, okay, a sentence saying blah, and then I could just remove a sentence saying, and then that was the sentence. 
but the fact that I was writing it this way uh, took me out of the critic critic mode in my brain and allowed me to write entire paragraphs with much less uh, pressure because eh, I'm just moving things around, just writing some things down. It's not a paragraph. It's not a sentence. I'm just saying what the sentence will say. I need a sentence here that says blah, 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 blah. Oh, guess what? That is the sentence. I just removed the front part. Now I've got a sentence. I do that for all the sentences. Now I've got a whole paragraph. Remove the square brackets. Now I have a paragraph. May not be perfect, but it's ready for editing and it has the flow of ideas. So I could do that and get an entire, um, you know, written, complete version of something that I could go back and do some editing on without having to rewrite it from scratch. Because that's the other thing I'm trying to avoid doing, which, you know, Dean Wesley Smith, he said that, like Heinlein says, you don't want to be rewriting things, especially, you know, first of all, it can kill the um, spontaneity and freshness uh, but also just, you know, if you're redoing drafts and drafts and drafts, that's not finishing it. Um, and there's such a thing as over, you know, over rewriting. So we're not going to rewrite the whole book. This, But um, I can do editing or I can give it to a reader and get their comments and, and do some editing. But that's different from, you know, cleaning up a sentence here or tightening up a couple sentences is different from, Oh, the book's written the wrong way, uh, took the entirely, entirely wrong perspective, or that's not really the book I want. I'm going to throw it out. We're going to start over from scratch. We're just not doing that. We're going to, you know, uh, do this other approach. So uh, so we, I want to include this idea. So part of it is being meta. Okay. So that's part of it is being meta. I don't know if the rules say that. Okay. Be meta, apply the strats I am using in the video and series to the book, to writing the book. And include in the book the strats I am using for writing the book. Etc. Okay. So we're going to try to be self applicable as much as possible. Okay, uh, there we go. We got an hour, seven minutes in. Uh, that's it for right now. Talk to you later.